you to our witnesses for a very complex issue, and you've given us a lot of information. So I think I need to make sure that we've understood just all the things that you've tried to present to us. So if I understand correctly, the landscape since NAFTA and now CUSMA has significantly changed that has in part put Canada in a bit of a sticky position. If I could ask Professor Dufour, you stated that now with there not being provisions around federal government procurement in CUSMA, that puts us in a difficult position in terms of getting an exemption to buy America because we can no longer have a preferential uh, most favored nation type approach. Have I got that right? I think overall you've understood that correctly. What I said was this, and just to summarize, in fact, uh, you cannot have a preferential agreement with the United States. That's the rule. An exemption is possible when you sign a free trade agreement previously in NAFTA. There was a clause on government procurement that legislated these bilateral relations. This is no longer possible unless we add a chapter on public procurement, unless we drop a parallel agreement that would be part of CUSMA. But today, we cannot justify being in a preferential relationship with the United States when it comes to government procurement by them giving us a waiver. If they give us a waiver, they have to grant this to all of the other members of the GPA. And I'm sorry that I didn't say this in French. But the technical vocabulary is more difficult, so it's easier for me to do this in English. When we negotiated CUSMA, the federal government would have known that the possibility for this executive order around Buy America was a possibility to be put in place once we took out those provisions around federal procurement in CUSMA. I was not in the negotiating room. I don't know if they had cognizance of this or not. I do hope that this was an impact that they did not account for. The American requirements for the government procurement, their demands, in fact, were too excessive. This would have been a disadvantage for Canada. And again, this was not an easy round of negotiation. I have the sense that for that reason, they've decided to eliminate the government procurement chapter. But perhaps somebody else could answer that, perhaps somebody who was in the bargaining team. But I do hope that they didn't see what occurred coming at all. So, Ms. Professor Hughes, if I could. We, Canada and others have been given um, a strong indication of what the intent uh, of the United States is from Biden's um, pro proclamation in 2020 that they wanted to look at how they were going to do things, uh, modifying the rules and, uh, and certainly looking at critical supply chains, national security. So this, it, they, they have given us the United States has put us on notice, telling us the direction that they're looking at going into in terms of having sort of more things at home. Is that is that a fair statement? Uh, yes. Um, and I apologize, uh, 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 Madam, is it Auslev? Auslev, yeah. Auslev. Uh, I was looking at your April 8th statement where you said the Americans are looking to protect and repatriate a significant amount of jobs in steel and iron and manufacturing to the U.S. Those were your words, and I think those are very apt words, and the signal is very clear. But I would say to everyone on the committee, of course, the target of all that is a more distant trading partner, Absolutely. not Canada. But um, – as to something Professor DeFore said, I am uh, more optimistic that it would be possible to uh, renegotiate and open uh, Chapter 12. I think it is Professor DeFore Chapter 12, which is the government procurement chapter of of uh, you. You, I've been. I'm going to call it NAFTA too. I believe um, it's Chapter 13. <laughs> Chapter 13. Okay. So to say to take something that Ms. McEwen said, you know. 
why not propose to the Americans, let's reopen that chapter, but with an environmental focus. Now, it is true, uh, Professor DeFore would say that someone looking out might say, well, you can't do that. You have to renegotiate the whole thing, uh, which was certainly a criticism that was thrown at the United States's limited renegotiation of Chorus, its free trade agreement with South Korea. But um, that's pretty esoteric. And uh, if there was a genuine effort to uh, oh. bring environmental standards in, sorry to be so I just want to say, last thing I want to say, if there was a genuine effort to make environmental standards as meaningful in the agreement as labor standards, where Canada and the United States and Mexico should be proud, maybe not enough, but proud, um, that'd be great. Ms. Alice, love you have 15 seconds, sorry. And we're a bit tight for time today. I apologize. All right. Well, I hope I might get another opportunity, but thank you very much to the witnesses.